Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Why. Today, we're going to be talking about the third church of the seven churches in the book of the Revelation, the church of Pergamos. And what makes this church so unique and interesting is its name gives you the meaning behind it. It mm. literally is translated to be married to the world. Mm. So we're talking about a compromised spirit. I'm going to talk about how that is affecting us in the church today, the world today, and, it is. and how we as believers need to watch the time clock on the wall because it all began with Israel going back to the land, and right. now we're in the last of the last days. I think mm -hmm. hours are ticking by. So join us today on Behind the Why as we get behind the why of the compromised church. But before we do that, go ahead and take a moment, please, to like and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell right there and like for us. That way, when we do drop a new episode, you'll get notified in your mailbox. You can stay right in tune with us. And also, mm -hmm. we want to encourage you uh, to drop your comments or prayer requests. We'll be sure to reach out to you and or respond email. to you. Email. That's, that's still relevant today. Yes, I keep forgetting about the email <laughs> there. Uh, it is... Uh, listed on the bottom of the screen so you can check what is on that. We want to thank you guys who have been supporting us through the Patreon account. We really appreciate that and may God bless you as you continue to bless us. May he bless you as and well. And also our new Instagram page. Yes, the new Instagram. All that will be on the yeah, screen. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> and so go things ahead and shifting. Stay in tune bit. with us as we try to stay in tune with you because it is our idea here to give you the information so that you can look at the Word of God and began to look at the world around you and see where we are on this, this clock we call time because mm -hmm. Jesus says something very significant. He said that in the last days, it'll be like a woman who's pregnant. We right. just happen to have a lot of women pregnant in our community right now. Mm -hmm. We've been baby watching boom. baby. People have babies. People find out that they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so we see how this in the beginning, that is like we talked about before, it's almost invisible. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the changes start. The changes on the inside happen first. You don't even notice it. And then all of a sudden little things are happening. Something stops mm -hmm. and something else begins. And right. that's what we're talking about today. So there's a lot of things in America that has stopped and some, a lot of things that have begun. Go ahead. Go okay, ahead. this is totally off topic, but okay. I, I just, it's, this is just an organic conversation. This came to my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I saw this meme earlier. Um, because I follow a few like reformed pages on Instagram. Right. I don't personally say I would never tell someone I'm a reformed Christian just because I don't think not, that not way. Not as far as theology. Yeah, uh, you know, but um, I agree with a lot of different reformed teachers, and I love mm -hmm. their Bible teaching. It's very thorough, right? As they exegete scripture. Right. And so, anyways, I follow this page, and he shared this um, this meme, and it said, Disp and it, it said uh, dispensationalist view. Or like, how, how, oh yeah, it said, how dispensationalists view prophecy. Mm -hmm. And it showed this woman wearing sunglasses in the shape of the United States. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I kind of laughed because I was like, that's funny. <laughs> because I can see how that tendency comes, right? I, you know, in the sense of we talk about the different dispensations, mm -hmm. right? Whether you're in the time of grace, in the church, and then. Um, and I was like, I think that is a pitfall that can happen. I wonder if those sunglasses change if I move to Canada or to South Africa. I'm wondering, you they know. Just, just more or, or are all dispensationalists just I wonder what kind American? of sunglasses that the Australians are looking through right now. Makes you wonder. Anyways, I thought it was... Just thought saying. It, I know. Just saying. Right. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Isn't it? I just thought it was funny because I was like... Because obviously... We look at where we're living. It's all, you can only see the world through your own perspective. Right. And so I don't... And I, I, I don't think we we try to fall into that category of, oh, America's a center. No, Ooh. we never said that, right? Um, Matter of fact, we say the exact opposite. Yes, but I think that we have a lot going on in our nation right now and just the history of our nation that just speaks to, I mean, the state of the church. I you think know, that we, that we would be, from. I think we would be remiss if we don't look at the historical factors and indicators of the American nation. Right. Now, <clears throat> I believe very sincerely that world history hinges on a nation is Israel, not America. No, so Israel is the, is the nation that, that history hinges on. But America has been very significant in that, in that uh, as we look at the world platform today, we are Israel's really only ally, only right. true friend. And the Bible tells us very clearly that in the last days, all the nations of the earth will turn against Israel. And that's why I said in our last program, it was mm -hmm. so eye-opening to see the steps that members and there are members in our own Congress who are striving so, so purposefully to break those ties to with break Israel. that tie with Israel. Right. And so that tells us where we are mm -hmm. on that on that uh, prophetic calendar the, or the clock as we've been using that, that, that metaphor. 
And so it's important that we understand that. And right. we talked about this before in our Bible study, we talked about as we went through the curses that God promised would happen when a nation turns its back on him. And just like it did with the nation of Israel, we see some of those same curses falling through here. Mm -hmm. We saw uh, the curse of slavery. We saw the curse of um, the Civil War and that, that big correction out of that. And then we saw coming out of that World War I and all the corrections that was uh, uh, directed toward this nation that came. And we went right out of that, went right back into hedonism. Uh, in the Roaring Twenties, we mm -hmm. went right into it. Coming sexual out, sexual revolution, yeah, the sixties, and, like and we just things. go on and right. on and on. And we saw, and we talked. The Bible talks about even some of the plagues that God would send, the dust storms, and how. I mean, we talked about the great uh, dust bowl of of, uh, of the Depression era, and all that went on before that. And we see all these things that God has stacked up, and mm -hmm. He does these things because He's trying to get our attention to right. say, guys, this is bad. Mm -hmm. But there is something so much worse ahead of you if you don't get off of this track. And so he's been striving very, very purposefully to turn our attention. Right. And in America, we saw that when we just get progressively worse. Mm -hmm. We've gotten progressively worse. Like you mentioned, Mongo, the sexual revolution of the 60s. And out of that, then we came into uh, the abortion issue. And out of the abortion issue, we came into the homosexual era and all those things we could been pushed to strive. Mm -hmm. And now we're into the the rainbow coalition where you can change this and change that. We're just pushing harder and mm -hmm. harder against the Christian mores that God has given us. Right. And the Bible tells us that if we do that, we will be judged. Mm -hmm. Now there's a, here, there's a consequence. <laughs> yeah. And here's the other side of that is the purpose for that judging is not so God can squash you. I got you because God's not intimidated by us. Mm -hmm. now, a lot of people get this confused. They think that God is up in heaven going, I got this really nice place called heaven and I want to see who's good enough to come. Well, if you read your Bible, you know, for a fact, that's not the case. Right. Uh, there's nobody good enough to come. The Bible You're tells us that make everybody right. is condemned. And so what he's trying to do is get everybody off this sinking boat mm -hmm. called life and get us into eternal life so that we can come to that place where we know him because sin does condemn. Let's get back on the Church of Pergamos yes. right now. Sorry about that. <laughs> what I found uh, indicative is that we're going to start this conversation. Like I said, the name Pergamos literally translated means married to the tower or married to the world. So it's telling you that this mm -hmm. church is going through a phase where it is going to be uh, pressed into compromise. That's that's the temptation there. And when he points out the two faults that we'll look at here in a moment, we'll see that these faults are very per, uh, pervasive. And I can talk about the American church in this context because that's the one that I'm a part of mm -hmm. uh, on the local level. We see this spirit of uh, carnality and commercialism and, and materialism that has been a part of who we have become as a, a entity. And so Christ is trying to get us to purify our lives. We go back to what we said before. Remember that when you study the book of the Revelation, you have to study it the same way you do Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm -hmm. You have to study it the same way you do the book of Romans. It's not some book that's set off for some great distant in the future. It is how we live today. Right. And that's what's so important. We have to learn how we live today. So if we take in consideration now the... Uh, the name of the church. And then I want to read here how Jesus identified himself to the church before he began. He says, right. I am the first and the last. I am he that hath, I forgot the wrong glass on, he that liveth and was dead, and nope, behold, that's I not am this alive one. forevermore. That's, that's chapter. Uh, yep, the, for the for uh, chapter 12 to Pergamus, it starts, he just does not say that. He said, when we read it. Okay, let's read first how he identifies himself to this church. Go ahead and read that. Okay, perfect. So this is starting, it's chapter two, verse 12. And it says, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, these things says he who has a sharp two-edged sword. Mm. That's how he describes himself. The sharp two-edged, that's right. The yeah. sharp two-edged sword. Now what we're looking at here is that now when you think about that, we go back to the reference where we see that in the book of Hebrews, mm -hmm. where we talk about the, the Lord uh, has a two-edged sword. Right. We know we're talking about the word of God. Mm -hmm. So we know what we're talking about. He's going to judge him with that, with his word. So we mm -hmm. know that. So let's go back. We see that. What I want to do that before we get this breakdown, go ahead and read the letter mm -hmm. to Pergamos in its, in its entirety. Read that so we'll get that in context Perfect. for our audience. Go ahead. So these things says he who has a sharp two-edged sword. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful 
faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Thus, you also uh, have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. This is, I, I created an outline here, some of the points we want to look at. The first thing we look here is the revelation of the character of Jesus as it pertains to this church. That's where the first referencing the name he gives himself. I'm here who has the two edges or the double edged sword. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, again, when we think about this era, uh, as it especially as it reflects in the world today, when we began to look at what is acceptable or is accepted as proper behavior for the church, mm -hmm. the thing we have to look at is what does the word of God say? We have, I have church members who, are, who argue with me that it's okay, uh, that, it's, uh, that a woman should be able to have an abortion. I've had church members come to me and argue with me that it's okay, that women, uh, that uh, homosexuality should be accepted, just about loving somebody. And we have people talking about uh, salvation as being just being as good as you can and, and, and just holding on to the, the faith, the things that you believe in. We have all these ideas that come out, but they're not based on the word of God. Mm. And that's why we have the the condition of the church that we have in America today. I mean, as we think back to this last election that we just had, the presidential election, to put it in a contemporary context, the issue seemed to have been so black and white as mm -hmm. far as what the the word of God was leaning toward or, or, or said was right and what the, the parties were. And, and it was amazing to me as a Christian is how many believers voted against things that they personally believed to be true. Mm -hmm. You know, when I talk to believers, they'll tell me, yeah, I know that's wrong, but yet they supported a position. So we see here again, the word of God being the judge mm -hmm. for this church. So we stand here now and we go, okay, how do we stand? It's not based on how much hard, how hard we work right, or even how good we are. But what the word of God has. Well, to another say. thing that this is even where it says, right? He said these things says he who has the sharp two edged sword. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's like authority. And Not it, has a sharp two edged. No, he has right, the. Like right. this is it. He is the authority. The, the buck stops. Right. Here. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. The vinyl, and that's where the church has to come back to. And I think that's one of the preeminent arguments for the church of Pergamos here. And what he's saying to us as a contemporary church is that come back to the authority. Mm -hmm. Come back to what is the rule, not what your denomination says, not what your pastor says, but what does the word of God say? And we have to be thinking, believing, reading, meditating believers in God's word mm -hmm. so that if we do have a teacher who's teaching us wrong, we can identify. It. And we see that with Balak, right? With mm -hmm. that false teaching that come out a little later. And then the last one, the next one here is the intimacy that Christ, uh, intimacy of his knowledge with his people. He says to us, I know where you go. I know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I know these trials that you had. I know the hardships you're facing. I know all of that. But in the face of that, he still calls us to faithfulness. Mm -hmm. He still calls us to faithfulness. And then the commendation to the church. He's going to give them a commendation. And then we, you read it. He gives them the rebuke. And then he gives them a correction. Okay, now that I've told you what's wrong. This is what do, you got to do, do to get something right. Different, right. And then has a promise of blessing. So we're going to go through this now. And I know that there's some things that you pulled out aside that kind of gives color to this. So let's go through mm -hmm. that as well. And uh, one of the first things you talked about there is, is the point he brought up about Balak and, and Balaam. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just say this. The first thing that came to my mind when I'm reading this and, and you know, the way my Bible kind of breaks it up, it has the title for mm -hmm. each thing. So it's a Pergamos, but it says the compromising church. Right. And so, of course, I already read that. And I'm thinking about, you know, compromise right. and, and what leads us to that. And, and like we're saying, we look at our modern church today. And how much we see compromise coming in. You know, I, I think about just even recent scandals that come out of different churches, you know, really influential churches. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to to my brother off camera about Hillsong because we had both been there. You know, mm -hmm. we used to go to that church for a time and and just how how much compromise came in, you know, mm -hmm. small choices, little by little. In the beginning, it seemed like a great movement. Right. But just a choice that was made. Married to the world. Yeah. Trying to be like the world. Yeah. And these choices have consequences. Everyone. And eventually we know that 
sin leads to death, and every we've time. seen a death in every that. Time. In every that. time, I was talking to a young man today, a, a, a young a young man, uh, early, 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 just a young, and I was asking about church, and I said, "How do you like church?" Uh, he, he went to a different church, and uh, he said, "I don't know. It's okay. I don't like it." I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "It's so loud," and he's looking at me in in, in this just talking just off the top. He goes, "It's so loud." He goes, "Walk in and." They got all these lights flashing and fog machine. He goes, I don't know, it just, mm -hmm. I don't like it. It just seems too much. And I'm thinking, here's this child saying, I want to go to church. But when I go to church, it's like, you know, my words now, it's like the world. <laughs> it's like I'm going to a concert. Mm -hmm. I got fog machine going. I got strobing lights and I got the shakings of stage. You know, I'm like, well, who needs the Holy Spirit with all that going on, right? Right. Like, Go away. <laughs> and here's the innocence of this child saying, I don't like it hmm. because his heart is, is wanting. Even as this young child, he's wanting something. He goes to church and it's not there. Mm -hmm. And, and it's so easy for us to be compromised like Pergamos was here is that the, the, this you can get married to the world, mm -hmm. and you and the compromise happens for good reasons. Right, like here, and, and for instance, we know they were being uh, persecuted. Dalmatia, who uh, Dalmatian, who was the Roman Empire, the emperor at that time, hated Christians. Right, I mean, he hated them with a passion. He loved hurting and killing Christians. He made it a, a illegal. I mean, every descendant of King David's family was supposed to be put to death. If a Christian was arrested for anything, they could not be released without being punished severely unless they denied Christ. And if they refused to deny Christ, they would be put to death. He was the one that actually sent uh, John to the uh, Isle of Patmos. Mm. So this is the condition they're living in. So it's it's not easy. Don't get me wrong. I, right. I don't want to paint this picture like, well, of course there's compromise because you know everything. Was, no, it, it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was costing them life. But Christ says, despite the fact that it may cost you your life, you still mm -hmm. have a higher call. Another thing that's interesting about this, and I've read this so many times, but mm -hmm. this last time I read it was the first time I actually noticed when he said, there's some among you mm -hmm. who are compromised. And then at the end when he talks about, you know, basically what's going to happen, repent or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them mm -hmm. with the sword of my mouth. Right. So he's talking specifically within this church, there's some people there who are still faithful. Because it's, it's, you know? it's ultimately the church, it's right? The church, it's the church of Jesus sense, Christ. Right? And so he's calling out, though, there are some among you who are who are compromised. And you're tolerating them. Yeah. You're allowing them to be there because the word of God is the judge. So I can, and we and know, the, used to be the most famous scripture, scripture noted in America was John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Now, the most common scripture in, in the Bible don't is, judge don't me. judge me. <laughs> you know, it's like, but we have gotten don't so uh, put judge. off on that, that we don't stop to understand what that scripture Read really means. Read it in means. context, right. Right. And so what happens is, is that now I don't want to judge you, so I let you continue in sin. Mm -hmm. I don't want to judge you, so you say something wrong, and I go, Because mm. we missed the part where it says, you know, because, you know, why... Don't take the speck out of your brother's eye if you have the log in your own eye. What it says is get the log out of your eye so that you can see rightly, then, then go then and help judge. your brother. Like, and, and this is the mistake that Pergamos wasn't making. They, were, they weren't doing that. They mm -hmm. were falling into that trap. And that's what I see happening in the American church. We tolerate everything. Mm -hmm. We bring all kind of stupidity into the church. It has nothing to do with the gospel. And we preach stuff from our pulpits that have nothing to do with the gospel or it's so twisting and skewed. We may say the name of Jesus here and there, but the message is not gospel. Right. And nobody's getting saved because the, what did Paul say in the letter to Corinthians, right? It's not through fancy presentation of speech, but it's through the power and demonstration of the, of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's what's lacking. So we have preachers who can preach up a storm. They can put on the show and all, whether they be the, the intellectual type pastor who has the graphs in charge and can talk to you like they're lecturing you in a Harvard hall, mm -hmm. or you could be the preacher from the deep South who get the, and, and, and all that mm -hmm. other, the call and response that we like to do in the black church sometimes. But none of that is preaching the gospel in and of itself. Right. It's just a mechanism for doing it. It's just a platform. And so all these things happen and we and we have a tendency to gravitate toward what we are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. 
So if we P-L-U, like people if we, like us, yeah, if we like culture. the call and response, we go to that. Right. If we like the very intellectual, straight lace type, we go to that. If we like the very uh, liturgical type, we go to that. We find, and that's how we have all these church of the different flavors around, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is a great mistake, and and I think is operation of the flesh. Uh, my personal opinion, I think all of this is a, that 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 denominational idea is really carnal because it's... Well, I think, I think uh, Paul would agree. Yeah, when he said, some are saying, I'm of Apollo, some yeah. of Paul. He said, stop. Because you're leaning toward, the, and it's just stupidity. Right. Get to the word. That's what I say. And you'll hear me say that all the time. Go to the book. Mm-hmm. Go to the book. And so we find this here with the uh, the church of Pergamos where they have this married to the world mentality. One of the things we see in this society is the incredible looseness or the breaking of the morals when it comes to sexual immoralities in the Mm -hmm. world. It is everywhere. And that's one of the things that we see that he's pointed out in this letter is that this sexual immorality is such a part of this this life because we have a tendency to want to tie in my being free, my being uh, autonomous means I can do whatever I want. And most often that's reviewed or that's revealed as some kind of sexual uh, Mm -hmm. acting out. And that's such a part of, especially in this American landscape, it's such a part of it. And and not only does it happen, but we we legitimize it, mm-hmm. we justify it. It, it, mm-hmm. it. I remember when I was working as a police officer in Southern California, we did this big uh, vice raid one night. And you had two busloads of prostitutes in, and this one prostitute said to me, and I was booking her in. She goes. Why are you arresting me for having for selling sex on the corner? I can go right down here to Hollywood, do the same thing, get paid money for it, and it's no big deal. Hmm. And I looked at her and I said, you're right. I guess the only difference is if you work in Hollywood and sell your body, Uncle Sam gets his tax cut. You don't get a tax cut when you sell on the corner. So here in Orange County, it's illegal. Well. And it was that same thing. But that mentality was is that we will promote immoral behavior. We're promoted in our movies and our music and all this does in our industry. Mm -hmm. We see how we dress up our little kids. Everything is so sexualized. And we're just following that doctrine to destruction. Mm -hmm. And because that invades the church, that same. Yes, you see it in church. You know, modesty uh, used to be a thing of modesty was a big deal when I was a child. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not knocking anybody. If If all you got is clothing that is immodest, then you bring your immodest butt to church and get saved. Okay. <laughs> Hang on. Right. It's like but, that's all you have. But like, if you are growing up in the Lord and you mm-hmm. got, then you should not be dressing with your body all hanging right. out. You know, what, one thing that comes to my mind as we're talking about this and this idea of compromise, right, and why it's an issue. Mm-hmm. And I have a couple of things to say. The first thing is this: I think sometimes we forget that God is holy, and we talked about yes. this. We talked about this in a Bible study recently, right? I think just yes, yesterday, it was mm-hmm. Friday. Yeah. Okay. Whatever day it was, we had a Bible study and we're talking about that, you know, God's holy Uh and we should have this, this fear of him right? because a holy God, he's not going to be, we, or I'll say it this way. We cannot be in the presence of a holy God Mm -mm. with with sin. That's why we always approach him in humility in Christ in, in, Christ. in what Christ did for in us Christ. recognizing Amen. like we say you know my righteousness alone is filthy rags that's why I have to be I have to put on the righteousness of, of, of Christ day. Jesus every, every day. day and so I think the problem is when we when we allow compromise in our lives we're we're setting ourselves up for judgment because God also judges sin. And, you know, even here when he said... Um, that brings us to the Balaam and Balak Yeah, when, he, when you're talking about Balaam and Balak, right? Mm-hmm. They're stumbling block before children. They're eating uh, things sacrificed to idols. They're committing sexual immorality. And the story, if you remember, right? Balak was telling Balaam, hey, curse the... Curse he, Israel. Cur- curse curse Israel. Israel. And he's like, I can't. They are blessed of God. The only way we can even, like, really touch them is by getting them to sin against right. God. Because then God will judge their if, sin. If you can just stop and hear that. You hear that whole statement there that... That God has a hand of protection around those who are his. Mm -hmm. He's sheltering those who are his. And if we can stay in right behavior with him, then he has a hand. He will will shelter us. But Satan's goal, Satan's goal is to get you, me, and everybody else into compromise. Right. Because if we compromise, basically, (coughs) we are, (laughs) then we're putting ourselves in that prime place for Mm -hmm. a couple things. To be attacked by the enemy because he's looking for those cracks and like, ooh, look, you look compromised. He's like like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's like, if he can get you, he will. And Mm -hmm. then secondly, when we're believers, willingly living in unrepentant sin, 
because God loves us, he's going to judge that sin. Oh, that's good. Every time. You know? Okay. Do me a favor. We didn't have this on the schedule, but go ahead and turn in your Bible, please, there, to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 and, Corinthians? Uh, I want you to read ah, verses 1 through 5. Read verses 1, because that goes right in line with what we're talking about here. Uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, uh, Paul is talking to the church of Corinth. Now, for those who don't know, Corinth was, was kind of like a modern-day Vegas, Okay. Corinth was the, was, was the Vegas of its day. You know, where everybody <laughs> went there, where everything was happening. And now you had the church that was in that city. And mm-hmm. so there was certain compromise that was there. Even the sexual immorality we talked about earlier was all prevalent there. And Paul was teaching the church not to be that way. As you're going to be saints, you've got to be different. You know, a lot of the epistles are all like correcting, all like, to the stop church. doing what the other people do. <laughs> That's what, I think most Christians forget that. When we read the Bible, oh, it is Jesus. written to people well, who are already confessed to be believers. Right. And it's saying stuff like, don't sleep with your father's wife. <laughs> you're like, oh, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? It, it's talking <laughs> to Christians. It's like, you did what? Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. No, stop. Stop it. <laughs> you know, and so. Check yourself. You know, right before you wreck yourself. And, and this is what Paul said. Read those five verses okay. for us. Okay, so 13, one through five. Uh, this will be the third time I am coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. I have told you before and foretell as if I were present the second time. And now being absent, I write to those who have sinned before and to all the rest. That if I come again, I will not spare. Wait, sorry, I missed my spot. I will not spare, sorry, I will not spare. <laughs> Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, who is not weak toward you, mm-hmm. but mighty in you. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. Mm-hmm. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Check test yourself. Your, and he says, test yourselves. Mm-hmm. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqual- you are disqualified. So here, and here's Paul. He's saying here's here. He's saying the same thing here that uh, John the Revelator records back in the book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. Check yourself. Right. And this is what he's saying to the church in the spirit of Pergamos now. You're, you're in that place where because of life situation, you, you, you're tempted to compromise. Hmm. If I just give the world a little bit of authority in my life, maybe they'll make it okay. Maybe they'll leave me alone. Maybe it'll be all right. And what he is saying is don't do that. Hmm. If you hold out, I will give you a white stone. You know, and this is something that is interesting to me because like I said, in Corinth was one of the places where the gladiatorial games was very popular. Mm-hmm. And what would happen is that when you went into the gladiatorial games, one thing you got was you got a white stone and that white stone was like a ticket. And with that white stone, you could cash it in for uh, food, drinks and stuff like that. And it was just kind of a reward type situation. Mm -hmm. And so I find it really interesting that the Lord would use that. And that's a lot of other things that 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 could be tied to. But that's just one of the things that was contemporary at that time that Christ says, I will give you a white stone. I will give you the reward. You see, and that just leads us to where if I hold fast to God, he's going to give me a new name. Mm-hmm. And I think about the, the name. Think, think about the, the names that God changed. You got Simon that got changed to Peter. Paul uh, got changed uh, uh, to, uh, from Saul to Paul. Saul to Paul, yeah. You know, he, he's changing our names and that's a new name. Even, even like Jacob and Israel, Jacob right? to Israel, yeah. yeah. And so you look at that and you go... He has a new name for me. And just like those names meant something different, it, it told about the character that these men were becoming. The name that he has for you and for me is, 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 is telling of who he's created us to be. Hmm. And that reward, he says that in, in Revelation, in the book of Revelation, he says, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. And he said, I'm going to give you, if you got some good coming, I'm going to give it to you. If you got some bad coming. I'm going to give that to you too. Mm-hmm. And so that white stone that he's going to give us will be that, that guarantee. So he's talking that metaphorically, of course, of our reward for being with him. But mm-hmm. he's saying this in the face of living in Pergamos, this compromise. You know, uh, we, I hear people all the time talking about sin and how uh, they feel sometimes, like even like they feel like God's tricked them into sin. It's like, What? I mean, the word of God, we're talking about this in the book of James, remember? Mm-hmm. That you know, when you sin, don't blame God. <laughs> that was you. Yeah. And your lustful desires. And your lustful desires. Don't be desire. blaming God for that. that is, right. You did that. <laughs> and when your sin comes to fruition, when it grows up, it brings a little package with it. And that little package is called death. Mm-hmm. Right now, if I introduce sin in my relationship with you, it will destroy our relationship. Mm-hmm. Because sin always brings death. Right. Whether that's to a family whether it's in a, uh, two people or whether it's to a nation, 
And what we have done here, something that my mm-hmm. childhood pastor, Dr. Reese, a scripture he always quoted, you have sown to the wind and now you're reaping the whirlwind. Right. And I see that here in this nation and, and we see that. And, and, and the other uh, correction that he sent to them was that you have uh, tolerated those who teach the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. Mm-hmm. That, that that man-made government, that, that idea that you can have this compromise in, in your faith uh, is looked at in two separate ways. One is that I have this hierarchy, uh, hierarchy, hierarchy, I can't say. Yeah, you said, you said it right, hierarchy. Hierarchy, hierarchy. that's that. That um, I have this, this man system between me and God, mm-hmm. that I have these men, uh, these people who are somehow at a level above me. And so I have to go through them to have my proper relationship with God. And the other aspect of it, of it that is, is that my natural self is so disregarded that it doesn't matter how I live. Hmm. As long as I said, Lord, take me as your child, make me yours. I can say that prayer and then I can live any kind of way I want because my natural self don't really matter. It's just my spiritual self. And I remember back in the 90s, there was a saying that went around the church uh, you ask a brother or sister, how, how you doing? And they would answer, well, my spiritual life, I'm doing really good, but my natural life's all jacked up. And one day a brother said that to me. I looked at him. I said, dude, is there two of you walking around here? Seriously. Said, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, if, you're, if your natural life jacked up, you jacked up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he goes, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I said, stop this game. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just giving yourself an excuse to live in sin. And, and mm-hmm. that's what Perkimus was. And we see that in America in particular today. You see, people still want to go ahead. Go ahead. They want to hold on to that religious garment Mm -hmm. or that idea of religiosity while totally dismissing Mm themselves or uh, uh, separating themselves from the authority of Christ. They still call on his name, but they don't they don't submit to the authority of Christ. They have several layers of authority between Christ and themselves. And very often the denomination, the pastor or the culture will very often trump. Mm -hmm. Oh, I use that word. Uh, <laughs> we very often trump Christ. Right. And Jesus said that in the Gospels too. He said, you teach for doctrine the traditions of men, mm-hmm. totally nullifying the word of God. So that's the church of Pergamos. And I think that mm-hmm. pretty much, you can see that spirit in the church in America today. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It's, it's, it's all around us. Yeah. So, so with that being said, Right. Going back to this idea, I'm just thinking like the, the importance of, of recognizing these things, right? Because uh-huh. you could talk about all day long and talk about the church. Right. And it's completely, you know, I'm talking about the church, so not I'm me, off the hook. Not me. It's just the, the church. <laughs> it's yes. the church that needs yes. to fix itself, right. right? But it's like, no, we just look at ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like we read in Second Corinthians, right? Test mm-hmm. yourself. See if you're in the faith. Like where where are you compromised? Right. You know, so I was reading it and personal I was thinking about myself, I'm like, shoot, okay. Because God, like we said, um, you said this in a Bible study a little while ago, the same God that said, you know, there shall be a, a child born of, vir- of a virgin, you know, in Bethlehem, is the same God that part of the Red Sea same is God. the same God that, you know, does, does all these things. It's the same God that says he's coming again same and God. he's going to judge. Same God. And he's going to judge sin. Same God. And if we, if we think about that, it's like, okay, well then that we should, I don't know, we should look at ourselves. And then kind of that so what of like, okay, if I'm going to, you know, take a good look and see where am I compromised or that, where, where, where do I see compromise and then what am I doing about but it? But that's the beauty of these seven churches. We looked at three so far. We saw the glorious beginning, the church of the, the apostles, right? Mm-hmm. And we saw how they began to just kind of weaken a little bit because they got so busy doing the church stuff. Right. They forgot who they were doing it for. Mm-hmm. And then we saw Smyrna. And that's the pushback from the world. Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're coming into my realm now. I'm, I'm the master of this realm, Satan says. And so therefore he began to try to take out the church through, through, through punishment and through persecution, the church of Smyrna. And now coming out of persecution, what flows next? <gasps> Compromise. I don't want to be persecuted. So I'll just soften my position a little bit and then the world will love me. But I'm going to tell you, it's just like Dalma- uh, uh, Domitian. No, the world won't love you. Uh, you. You can compromise and compromise. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm saying. I thought I'm going to burn, but let it out. No, I'm just thinking. The book of James. <laughs> I wrote down several verses of the book of James. I was like, you know what? If we talk about compromise, the first book that came to my mind is James. Mm-hmm. Because the whole book, he's just slapping in the church, saying like, you hypocrites. Like, stop. Like, 
and basically saying like talking to Christian people mm -hmm. and here's the hypocritical behavior that you have. And here's the, stop it. and yeah, basically stop, stop it. it. <laughs> you know, but he like, says in one place yeah. in, uh, in uh, chapter two, he says, don't even attempt the whole preferential treatment of people. In other words, racism and all that stuff, preferential. He's don't even attempt to hold that with the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we have these people talking about white, this and black, that shut up. Right. And, he, and come to Jesus. There's so much. And then even come to Jesus is in chapter four. Right. And then didn't you know that friendship with the world's enmity against God? And I was like, oh, we just see, a little compromise. Right. And we see so much of this, like trying to be a friend. No, no. I just want just a little compromise. You see, I'll go before the mission and I'll say, well, you want me to deny Jesus? I'll say it like this. I deny Jesus. Lord, I'm just kidding. No, I deny Jesus. I don't admit. Right. Compromise, right? Compromise. I want to be mm -hmm. like the world. And so we play in this game and we don't understand down mission. He's looking at people going, oh, so you don't want to see it, huh? Kill him. Because mm -hmm. he's he's motivated by his father, Satan. And as you look around the world today, mm -hmm. we're going to start bringing this to an end because we get, get pushed against the clock again. But look at it. That was a time when things like the mark of the beast and controlling system seemed like fantasy. But now... With this mandate, and everybody's saying you're gonna lose your job if you don't get the get the get the uh, the vaccination, all this stuff that's coming down the road right now, and it's being pushed not by CDC, but being pushed by Washington D.C. This is the government who's saying this, mm -hmm. and you're going, "Whoa, we're living in that world." So where it's plausible, yeah, well, before it, it, it's kind of like, that, yeah, I can't yeah, see it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're seeing it we now. We can see it. Yeah, we're seeing it now. We mm -hmm. see it a system that's worldwide. Mm -hmm. That's telling people if you don't give in to this governmental mentality, this global mentality, this this governmental authority, you will not be allowed to partake in society. Hmm. And when you read the Bible and it says things like, without the mark of the beast, you can't buy or sell. And you can't buy a loaf of bread. And you can't do this and that. And it seems so weird in those days. And you'll, but now, it seems plausible. Now, before you get upset with me, I did not say that the vaccination was the mark of the beast. <laughs> I never said that. What I said was the behavior that we're practicing now is a forerunner of that behavior, which will allow the Antichrist system to take over. Mm -hmm. And we are practicing it now. We're being pushed into that corner to say, will you submit to the authority at the sake of maintaining your pleasures in life? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to compromise your freedoms your liberties to have your pleasures. And that's what we are doing. That's the message of the Church of Pergamos. Don't compromise. And so our response should be, like Come we on. see in 16, verse 16, repent. <laughs> that <laughs> always seems to be what, what, he, what he says. Repent. That's it. That's it. That's Metanoia, what it is. Metanoia, right? Metanoia. <laughs> Turn. Change, change your, your mind. mind. Yep. Yes. Repent. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. Change your mind and go the other way. Stop walking this way. Mm -hmm. Turn around and walk the other way. And then I think another important thing, I mean, repent, get right. And then like our favorite verse, right? Don't judge. No, <laughs> no get get that huge log out of your eye. Repent. Uh -huh. Let the Lord lead you. So then, then we can see rightly. So then, then we can encourage one another. Because then, we have to. Yeah, because if I see, you know, you and my dad in, in compromise, I'm be like, you fix better. yourself. No, you better. I said this no, in the Bible of the night. The if you see me in sin, correct me. <laughs> Right. If you see me in sin, correct me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, yes, yes. Don't don't let me walk into a burning building going, oh, maybe he just needs to work on his tan. No, stop me. Don't let me or go I, in I there. feel like so oftentimes in church, it's like that's how come we, we act. It's like we see somebody walking into a place that they're obviously going to get hurt, and we're like, well... You know, I hope they, I hope they don't, but we know they will. But yeah. I hope they don't. I, tell, I don't hurt their feelings. So I'm not gonna tell hurt them. my feelings. Tell me the truth. Yeah. Tell me, please, tell me the truth. That's what right. I say. Yes. All right, we better get off this wagon. Yeah, we can. We've been riding it pretty forever. hard for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but here we go again, getting behind the why of Pergamus and the spirit of Pergamus mm -hmm. that we see happening in, especially in the U.S. Now we see it around the world, but I'm focusing here on the church in America as we see this this spirit of compromise. We have compromised so much that when we hear uh, talking about abortion or adultery mm -hmm. or drunkenness or a gluttony we're not even shocked by it anymore we just take it it's, it's the way life it's the way it is what are you talking about you know it's like mm -hmm. we need to be shocked by sin first in ourselves and then with each other let's let's not get comfortable with sin the bible tells us to to abhor 
even the garment that is stained by sin. Mm. So we want to look at it as, oh, no, let's get that away from me. And that's what we want to do. We want to have that attitude ourselves. So let's avoid that spirit, a Pergamos, that, that compromised spirit. And we'll move on to the next uh, ch church next time and we'll go on. But until then, take the time to get behind the why. Yes. When someone shows you something, ask them why. Ask them why they're doing it. So until next time, God bless you. We love you. Peace. Peace. We're out. <laughs>